Hallelujah. For God is great, <laughs> and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, we greet you, Facebook, IG, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. However, you are hearing my voice or seeing my face, we greet you in the strong and mighty name of Jesus, for he is Lord, and besides him, there is no other living God. So we greet you on today. Listen, I trust that you are continuing um, your watch parties. I thank you so much for every week participating, sharing, liking the video, as well as hosting watch parties. Again, the Lord does have a word for you on today. So let me thank you, first of all, for your participation in sharing in getting this word out. Again, our mission as disciples of Jesus is to turn the whole world into Christians. So we welcome your presence on today. And let me say this to all of the SGFC partners, those who have connected with us over these last few months. Um, we are, again, that much closer to resuming corporate worship. So let's thank God for that. Amen. So we long to see you and we will see you again here real soon. Um, we are still under 10. I know it sounds like um, there is a great number of us, but again, we are still under 10. As I always say, I'm just in the company of people who love Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, l let me say this uh, to all of the fathers. I want to wish you a happy Father's Day <laughs> on today. May you be honored in the way that you deserved not just today, but may you be honored as regular as it is necessary. So know that we love you, we appreciate you, and yes, your presence is needed. I also want to say Happy Father's Day to those males who have taken on the responsibility to aid in the tutelage of young boys and young girls where their father is absent. So we also say happy Father's Day to you as well. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I trust that you are ready for the word of God on today. Amen. And again, thank all of you uh, who come out each week to help uh, make sure that everything runs smoothly. So not only am, am I an essential worker, but you guys also are essential workers. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Those of you who have been following us, uh, you know that I have been doing a, or I, in, the, in the last few weeks I have been sharing a series of messages titled An Impartial Church an impartial church, talking about a church that's not biased, a church that's fair, a church that's equal, a church that's non-discriminating, talking about a church that's unbigoted. And we've traversed throughout the scriptures, and on last week, or throughout these weeks, we have been traversing through the scriptures and discovering truths regarding, regarding the black presence of black people in the Word of God. Last week, a couple of things that we discovered is that there's only one race. That is the human race. For we were all, according to the Word of God, made from one man or one blood, every nation or ethnos or every ethnicity. So there's one race, but a variation of ethnicities. And last week, we also discovered um, where the human race began geographically. So we, we know now from uh, the bibl a biblical perspective that the Garden of Eden was in Ethiopia on what later became known 
as the black continent of Africa. So I want you to continue to join us. Uh, however, I will continue this teaching on next week. I got some good information. And last week I ended with, um, I talked about how Adam and Eve had to be of a lighter color brown uh, in order to get all the colors that we have today. So we're going to actually discover exactly what shade of brown was Adam and Eve. And the church said, amen. 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 So look at your neighbor or look at someone next to you uh, at your uh, watch party and say, we got to make sure that we tune in on next week. Amen. amen. So we're going to continue our teaching on an impartial church on next week. So, but today in light of Father's Day, I want to uh, share what God has placed on my heart. Now, if you have been keeping up with the current world affairs, you probably noticed the social unrest that's pervasive literally throughout the world with the recent assassinations of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and the most neoteric murder, or the most recent murder, right here in Atlanta of Rashard Brooks. We see what we're seeing now is other ethnic groups realizing and rising up and declaring that black lives really do matter. <laughs> so, um, and, and just let me say, the, the individuals that I just named, the, it, there, there, are, there are a colossal of others who preceded them by the hands of wicked men, but it just, it, it, it's almost like with these, it has come to a head, and people are waking up and realizing, wait a minute, an injustice is an injustice, despite what color the human being is. Amen. Um, today, in light of Father's Day, I just want to take a few minutes, just, just a few moments, to encourage fathers and male role models, particularly uh, black men. Of course, it's for everyone, but in light of the series of messages that we have been doing, um, I want to uh, particularly, now, uh, African-American men, amen. All men, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, in 1993, the female group escaped, as many of you who were like me at that time, who were still uh, in the club, uh, had a hit song, Understanding. And just let me read the lyrics to you. <laughs> it goes a little like, what I need from you is understanding. How can we communicate? If you don't hear what I say, what I need from you is understanding. So simple as one, two, three, understanding <laughs> is what I need. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, as men, ladies, <laughs> uh, what we need from you is a little understanding, a little compassion. So uh, most oftentimes, uh, you guys are notorious for beating us down, uh, telling us what we aren't doing. But we're in a season now where we need to encourage our male, <laughs> males. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, treat your father today. You know, go above and beyond for us like you do for mama. Spend a little bit on us. We like to eat, too. We like nice things, too. Amen. Don't, don't, don't always count us out, but count us in. <laughs> Amen. So, but what we need from you, <laughs> ladies, is a little understanding, a little compassion. Let me hear you say that. A little, a little compassion. compassion. Now, this is not excusing um, our impropriety or malfeasance or misconduct, but rather having compassion from the standpoint of what we've been up against. But having compassion from what, when I say we, uh, going back 400 plus years, from being uprooted from our homeland, deliberately stripped of our identity and our culture, families separated, 
conditioned, having been conditioned to feel inferior, marginalized, treated as insignificant, uh, disenfranchised, we've been deprived of certain rights and privileges, emasculated, being deprived of our strength, bigger. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the stereotyped in many cases, attacked just for being black. Um, and, and as I was thinking, you know, when they promised, when they freed the slaves, you know, they were talking about giving them so much land and, 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 you know, we were promised restitution, but instead we were made victims of prostitution. We, 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 we were worked hard <laughs> with little pay. So, so overworked and underpaid for the selfish gain of wicked men. So, and then one of the things, one of the reasons why we need to have compassion and understanding, again, not make an allotment for people's mistakes, but what can we do, or we can't do what we don't know. We can't do what we don't know. And again, when you take a man who has been stripped of his home place, when it, of his homeland, a man who has been stripped of his identity and given another identity, it kind, it kind of explains why men are in search of their identity. We are looking for validation, someone to affirm who we are. That's oftentimes, that's why, that explains why sometimes men become uh, part of various organizations. Why? Because they give them a sense of validation. They give them a sense of belonging. So what we need is some understanding a little compassion while in pursuit of discovering our God-given purpose. Now, grace is, uh, the number five is symbolic of God's grace. So I just want to share real quickly five things that we need from you. And if I can, I'm speaking on behalf of the men on today. So five things that we need from you. Number one, we need you not to be so judgmental. Don't be so judgmental. Matthew 7, 1 through 5, ERV. What's number one? Amen. Nobody's speaking but men. Okay, ladies, the few that's here, let me hear you. Number one, don't be so judgmental. Number one, don't be so judgmental. Now, I'm going to read this, but let me preface by saying, oftentimes you hear people say, don't judge me. No, the Bible doesn't say don't judge. What the Bible clearly tells us is judge myself first, then I can judge you more clearly. So he never tells us not to judge, but we must judge ourselves first. Verse 1, do not judge others and God will not judge you. If you judge, judge, judge others, you will be judged the same way you judge them. God would treat you the same way you treat others. Verse 3, why do you notice the small piece, piece of dust that is in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood that is in your own? Why do you say to your friend, let me take that piece of dust out of your eye? Look at yourself, what? First, there it goes. You still have the big piece of wood in your own eye. You are a hypocrite. First. Take the wood out of, out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to get the dust out of your friend's eye. So one of the things we want to do is before we start counting men out, before we start looking at the exterior or how we're dressed and, or what we may appear outwardly, we automatically deem brothers no good. Let me, and see, the thing about judging myself first, See, I can then judge you more clearly. And what do you mean judge yourself first? Realize that I haven't always been where I am. We're all, if truth be told, are a work in progress. Everyone has potential. That's why it's important that we look at the whole paradigm because if I can see beyond the exterior and realize that you too have potential to do great things, just as someone believed in me, I too can what? Count on you. So what we need is women not to be so judgmental. Some of us don't want fancy cars, but we have greater priorities. There's things that we're working on. We know that that stuff will come. 
Some of us enjoy living in a small, tight-knit place now, again, because maybe we are working on something, and the bigger will come. So, But if I always judge you by what I see, I could possibly be missing something great and significant. Number two, another thing that we need from you is we need grace while searching for guidance. We need grace while searching for guidance. You know, Matthew talks about, you know, when the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. It's an expression applied to leaders who know as little as their followers and are therefore likely to lead them astray. So if, 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 if one, I have no idea who I am and I'm in an environment who's not telling me who I am. I need somebody to work with me until I get to that right place where I can discover who I am. So it's not always, again, that men are just being uh, 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 slow for and nefarious on purpose. No, they have no idea of who they are. Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no wise, intelligent guidance. The people fall and go off course like a ship without a ham. But in the abundance of wise and godly counselors, there is victory. Do you see that? So uh, uh, this kind of explains when you see sometimes young men or males seemingly going off course. Perhaps, well, that's a good indicator that they are being led by people who don't know as much as they do. So there has to be a grace given toward them watch this that, that, well what can I do I can point you in the right direction whereby you are getting wise and godly counsel whereby you can begin to walk in victory oh yeah so, so before you discredit him when he just says hello and you think he's trying to run game invite him to worship invite him to Bible class invite him to an online <laughs> Invite him to coffee and conversations. <laughs> Are you with me? So number two, what do we need? We need grace while searching for guidance. You got to remember, for the most part, especially if, if there is no male presence in the household, men are searching for their Identity In the Bible, it was the father who was known as the source. It was his responsibility to teach young or teach his sons, particularly a skill set, to teach them a trade. It was the father who told the son who he was. It was the father who affirmed the son. It was the father who gave his son a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging. As a matter of fact, women in the early uh, culture, earlier Bible days, they were looked down upon if they could not bear a male child. And whatever that father named that child, it carried weight. And when he spoke, they knew that what he said has to come to pass. So number two, we need what? Grace while searching for guidance. Number three. So in response to number two, what can I do? I can lend a helping hand. Perhaps I don't have the answer, but I can point you in the direction of someone who does. <laughs> Proverbs 3.27 and see, again, before we just throw individuals away, before we just count men out, I must ask myself the question, have I done everything that I could do to assist him in any way that I can? And see, if I haven't done that, I need to first look at the beam that's in my own eye. Proverbs 3, 27, ERV. Do, the ladies are quiet today. Do everything you possibly can for those who need help. See, these are five simple things. Act of kindness. Acts of grace. 
that if we would implement, of course, women and men uh, regarding others, it would do a great benefit to those who are in need. Doesn't have to be real deep. Just something simple as lending a helping hand. So number three, we want to do what? Lend a helping hand. So if you find someone who's in a difficult or unpleasant situation, ask the question, how can I help? Number four. What's number one? Call them back to me. Number one. We don't want to be so judgmental. Number two. We want to what? Give us grace while searching for guidance. Number three. We want to do what? Lend a helping hand. In other words, if there's something that I could do to assist in you not being distressed, let me do it. It could be as something as small as giving you a number to call. It could be as something as telling you uh, where to go. It could be as something as giving you a list of people who are hiring. It could be something as small as inviting you to worship. Number four, then give us grace while we grow. So once we find help, <laughs> once we get the necessary help, you, you, you know, what does Pastor T tell us? You know, we gotta, you got to give us time to change that paradigm. Those fixed beliefs, the way we have been conditioned to see the world. So we need grace while what? Growing. Grace while growing. So uh, even if he comes home to you and tell him, hey, I just received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He's going to need grace while growing. Why? Because his spirit, the real him, has now been made alive to God, but his mind his, is just as messed up as, as whatever experiences he had before his encounter with the Lord Jesus. So there may be some uh, slips, slip ups in terms of seeing those uh, old patterns and behaviors, but you have to give him grace while he is continuously renews his mind and that metamorphosis begin to take place. A righteous man may fall seven times. But guess what? He gets back up again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him, not the, the offense, but he upholds him by the hand. As a matter of fact, there was a time when the disciples asked Jesus, man, if someone's offense behind, how many times should I forgive him? He said 70 times 7. So you do 70 times 7, whatever that, multiply, what is it, 490? He, he, he's not saying after that, stop. It's a hyperbole. What he literally means, as you forgive them as many times as it takes. Now, does that mean I become a doormat and let people walk over me? Absolutely not. But it means I forgive you. See, a couple things happen. One, I'm freeing myself from the offense and being held captive. Yeah. And I'm also doing to you as God does to us. I'm extending grace toward you. Are you with me? Colossians 3. 13 NLT make allowance for each other's faults in other words there's a cushion I have allotted for you to act cuckoo sometimes oh well let me say it this way when you act cuckoo I have already made allowance for that now I'm not going to do like most men in three strikes you're out as a matter of fact, I'm the, I, because of the grace and love of God in me and me extending toward you as God doors towards us, I'm not even going to keep record of how many times <laughs> you've missed it. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who what? Offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must also forgive others. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5, E-R-V, verses 4 and 5. Love is patient. 
and kind. Love is not jealous, it does not brag, and it is not proud. Love is not rude, it is not selfish, and it cannot be made angry easily. Love does not remember wrongs done against it. So there go that grace while growing. And number five, the last one. Again, I just wanted to exhort the brothers on today and encourage the women. Give us compassion. Show us all we want is a little understanding. It's as simple as one, two, three. <laughs> understanding is all we need, is what we need. <laughs> Number five, speak to the king inside of us. That's what men are looking for. We're looking for you to speak to the king that's inside of us. As I heard someone say, it might have been Pastor T, uh, it, 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 in the sense that I'm saying this, in every man there's a dog and there's a king. You want to speak to the king in us. <laughs> and see, here's one thing you have to understand about men. Inwardly, most men are secretly vulnerable. And if truth be told, Depending on what type of environment we were raised in, our self-esteem is often fragile. Why? Because we often wonder if, if I'm doing a great job at being a husband, if I'm doing a great job at providing, if I'm doing a great job of being a, a, a father, am I doing a great job of being an upstanding citizen in the community? Am I a pillar of the community? Am I doing... So often, oftentimes there is this uh, sense of vulnerability, again, and a lot of it stems from not having validation. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Listen, we can speak death or we can speak life. And here's the thing, whichever one you speak that's the fruit that you're going to receive. And sometimes we wonder why things aren't getting better. It's simply because we're not speaking life to situations. Are you here? That's why oftentimes uh, a, a, man's, a man's anger is often a response to feeling disrespected by his wife or significant other. So sometimes, uh, and it's, again, it's not excusing the behavior but when you're talking down to someone and belittling someone who, who is, is, is have no idea, they're already dealing with a, a, an identity crisis, if you will, then here you telling me I'm no good and I'm sorry and I'm lazy. So, and we wonder where the anger comes from. No, we need you to speak to the king in us, not the dog in me. To men affirmation especially again from their wives and significant others man it is everything it's something about the way you say it that you can see you can get with the right words you can get a man to do anything you want with the right words whether it's by nagging or just by saying it in the right way. The, the reason why Delilah, Delilah got to Samson, even though she nagged him, she knew what to say. Lay your head in my lap. Let me rub your face. Let me stroke your ego. Get off me. I'm tired. I'm hot. Speak to the king in him. Rub your face. Rub my face. Rub your feet. 
I need a feet foot rub. Speak to the king in him. If you want to see a good picture of this, read the Song of Solomon. And you will see the love exchanges of <laughs> women affirming men. But to me, an affirmation from the wives and significant others is everything. And see, it, it, and this is not in all cases, but if they don't receive this affirmation from their wives, uh, most, well not most, some will begin to seek it elsewhere. As a matter of fact, they don't even have to seek it elsewhere. If they hear it, then they may start gravitating toward it because they're hearing you did a job well done. You are this, you are that. I appreciate you. Thank you. And so, so, and that's all they want is just a little affirmation. Hmm. And it's a known fact that when they receive regular, genuine affirmation, they become much more secure and confident in all areas of their lives. So what we need, women, is a little compassion. Ephesians 4.29 ERV, Ephesians 4.29. And, and l let me show you how this identity being affirmed is so important. And, and I'm not saying in all cases, but when there is no male presence, no male mentorship, and you have male children, well, they only do what they are exposed to. So if they're raised around nothing but women, then in the sense that I'm saying this, it, you know, it's not such a, you know, it's not strange in the sense that he maybe want to dress like a female or play with paper dolls or do whatever because he doesn't know anything else. There's no one there to tell him who he is his, his, that, that he has purpose, that he is somebody, speaking to the king in him. Am I saying women can't do it? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that you can't do it. You can do it, and you should be doing it. But if that's not being done, that can explain sometimes when we have males dealing with an identity crisis. Hmm. Are you here? Listen, the Father's blessing, what he spoke, it meant something then and it meant something now. That's why when Isaac was getting old and he didn't know how much time he had left, so he saw, hey, go out, get game. You know what I like? Cook me my meal. Let me speak a blessing. Rebecca overheard it. Told Jacob, hey, Go get this, go get that. We're going to cook a meal. I heard your father. He's going to speak a blessing. Do this, do that. Go get it so you can get the blessing. Mom, I'm not Harry like Esau. Don't worry about that. Go get the food. Of course, she took hair from a goat, put it on him. You know the story. When they brought the food, e even Isaac said, hey, you sound like Jacob. But when he finally felt it, but you feel like Esau. And he spoke the blessing. When Esau got back and discovered what happened, Isaac was like, oh, man. Why, why would Isaac be? Because he knew that what I spoke, it's going to come to pass. Are you here? And just a side note, those of you, when you are connected to the right house, when your seer speaks a blessing over you, you receive it with everything that's within you because it will come to pass. Verse Ephesians 4.29, ERV. When you talk, don't say anything bad. 
but say the good things that people need. See, what we need are the good affirmations. We need the good things. We need a little compassion, a little understanding. Whatever will help them grow stronger. Let me start over. When you talk, don't say anything bad, but say the good things that people need. Whatever will help them grow stronger. So in other words, if this is not going to help him grow stronger, even though what he did got under my skin, if this is not going to help him grow stronger, don't say. Remember, you want to speak to the king in him. So whatever you... Make sure that what you say will help him help them grow stronger. Then what you say would be a what? Blessing to those who hear. Are you with me? So simple as one, two, three. Understanding is what we need. And just let me close with this. And I want to declare this over males everywhere you are created in the image of God you are valued you are gifted yes you are strong you are intelligent you are not inferior you are a mighty man of valor you are a man of receive this you are a man of great skill yes you are just the right man for that job you have business acumen. You are just the man that they need. Yes, you are a great father. Yes, you are a great husband. You are not another. Matter of fact, you won't be another statistic. You are powerful. You are needed. You are loved. And yes, your black lives matter too. Now let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. Listen, fathers, happy Father's Day to you. I just wanted, as I felt compelled by the Lord to share this with you, you are needed. You do matter. And ladies, all we're asking for is just a little understanding, a little compassion. Yes, we are a work in progress, but I rest assured and I promise you this, or rest assured and I promise you this, that that process speeds up whenever you speak to the king in us. Man, we transform a whole lot better and a whole lot faster whenever you speak to the king in us. So I want to challenge every female, even the males. We have to do this to each other as well. But right now, I'm specifically speaking to females and wives, ladies. Speak to the king in us. Tell us, even if we don't look like it now, call those things that be not as though they are. And you keep declaring it until we transform into what you desire to see. Amen. Listen, you may be watching today, and perhaps you felt like you were nothing, sir. That is the biggest lie the devil has ever told you. You were created by God for a specific purpose to fulfill in this earth realm. And I want to say to you today, you are significant. You are somebody. And Jesus loves you. As a matter of fact, while you were yet a sinner, he died for you. And if on today, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I want to invite you to only one that could and did, the man Jesus. For the Word of God lets us know that no other name has been given under heaven whereby man 
must be saved. As a matter of fact, no other name has the power to save. Romans 10, 9 declares that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. And I want to say this. There's nothing that you could have done that the Lord has not already made provision for you to be saved. So if this is you, make that declaration, that profession of, profession of faith on today. And it's only one thing that I ask, that if you do that, let us know, because we want to celebrate with you as a new member of the family of God. Yes, amen. And we also want to make sure that you are connected and placed, whether it be here or somewhere near where you live, or perhaps you live in another state. But whatever the case, reach out to us. Let us know so we can contact you and make sure that you are placed somewhere whereby you are being affirmed. You are being taught the truths of God's word. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, anytime the word of God has been taught, the word lets us know that there should be a response to that word in the form of finances. What do you find that? I find it in Galatians chapter number six. The word of God lets us know that when we are taught the word of God, we should communicate or in the literal translation, support financially those who have taught us the word but here is what I want you to do today listen to what I'm about to say there's no father like Abba Father a daddy God no one can love us the way God loves us and this is what I want you to do today. As a matter of fact, this is what's in my spirit for you to do, to do today. Ask yourselves the question, how much does God mean to me? And of course, there's no amount of money conceivable that we could pay him for everything that he's done. But we can honor God. So what I want you to do today is to so whatever amount of seed that he places on your heart. You, you're going to ask yourself, Lord, you know what you mean to me. What would you desire that I sow? And whatever he says to you to do, just do it. Where well, preacher, where do you get that? I get it in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning around verse 5. The word of God lets us know that we're not to lean unto our own understanding. But in all of our ways, acknowledge who? Our Father. And allow Him to direct our paths. Listen, don't miss the instruction. A lot of times, the manifestation of great things is in the instruction. So what is the instruction again, preacher? The instruction is simply to ask yourself, what does God mean to me? How much does He mean to me? Just think about the things that He's done for you. And whatever he places in your heart. Just simply so. Amen. Listen, now there is a list of ways whereby you can support or contribute financially. And I ask that you will govern yourselves accordingly, whichever way suits you. So, and watch God do the rest. For we know the word of God declares that we have already been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God has already done everything that he's going to do. My faith, my, my, my honoring him is just in agreement or coming into agreement that what he already promised me belongs to me. Amen. So when we it, 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 and when we say we walk by faith, we not by sight, 
in literal terms, we walk in agreement with God. For without faith, it's impossible to be in agreement with God. That word please, it means to satisfy fully, to be agreeable. So when we're not agreeing with God, we're not in faith. So faith is just simply coming into agreement with God. That's why the Hebrew tells us, hold fast to your profession of faith. Hold fast to your agreement without wavering. So whatever he encouraged you to do today, beloved, do it. And he is not a man that he should lie. God provides seed for the sower. Well, listen, again to all of the fathers, happy Father's Day. May you be honored, as I stated earlier in ways that you deserve, not just today, but every day. I declare a week of multiple blessings. I deca declare a week of promotions, manifestations. I declare restoration in bodies. I declare healing taking place in those who are standing in agreement for restoration in areas of healing. I declare restoration in kidneys. I declare restoration in heart dysfunctions. I declare restoration in every area. I declare that tumors are drying up. People are being healed from breast cancer. And I know this. I'm declaring this out of my spirit. And there are going to be those who have a testimony. Share it with us. Share it with us. For we want the world to know that God is still sits on the throne. Well, have a great week. We love you with the love of Jesus. We'll see you next week. Enjoy your day. Happy Father's Day.